So, do you also need a new hacking laptop or stationary PC for your hacking? Now, in this video, we're going to talk about, you know, what kind of ways you should um, think when you buy a new PC for your hacking adventures. So, so of course, I'm going to say it straight out of the box. If you have just a casual laptop with 4 gigs of, of RAM, dual core, maybe quad core, nothing special. Now, your average $200 laptop, you know, it's not really going to be that good for you because you need to run virtualization, you need to have uh, some amount of RAM to run the virtual machines and so on. Now, having that said, it is possible for you with four gigs of RAM, with just you know a dual core, quad core, to actually do something. But just keep in mind that it's going to be slow. You will you will be frustrated and it will be lagging a lot. So, this video is just more about how to get the somewhat optimal setup for you going the cheapest way possible. So there are different kind of ways for you to do that. Now, just going into Amazon.com here. Actually, it's Amazon.de, so that's the German side. Let's go ahead and just take the .com side. Just go in and type word laptop, right? And then you're going to get different kind of solutions here. The very first one is $679. So let's just take that. You know, this is the first one I'm going to get. This is the first one I'm going to look at. I'm going to click on it. Just, you know, what's going on here. So what you're going to see, first of all, is just it's an HP with 16 gigs of, 16 gigabytes of RAM a 512 gigabyte SSD hard drive. So far, so good. Do you like the screen size? 17.3 inches is quite a lot on a laptop. Now, when it gets to hacking, you're not really, shouldn't be too much worrying about the resolution of the screen, but you know, it's probably good enough. Um, I guess it's it's full HD, if HD is full, I have no idea, but I guess that it is. Now, this is an Intel 11th generation 4 core i5. It's called 1135D7 up to 4.2 gigahertz. Now, this is the 11th generation of Intel processors. Now, the newest generation of Intel processors is the 12th generation. So, usually, I want to be really strict and straight about this. When you buy a laptop, in most occasions, it is uh, downgraded A generation if it's it should be affordable but because affordable laptops that, uh, that 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 contains the newest generation of processors is going to be you know quite expensive so we have a four core version here with an okay amount of gigahertz so you're going to look at this now we have four cores and they can run up to 4.2 gigahertz each you also have 16 gigabytes of ram it's a ddr4 ram not the newest one but it's okay and you have okay amount of hard disk space which is really good you have this intel iris xe graphic this is some onboard graphic card or something like that you know it's not not, not like rtx or dtx something like that or uh, something different like that so okay so how important is the graphic card mm, okay so let me break down for you this way when you're using different kind of tools like hashcat for example or other kind of tools that utilizes the graphic card's power to try and crack the password. It is, of course, really important for you to have a really good graphics card. But if you're going to do stuff like try hack me and hack the box and other kind of online virtualization, hacking something, challenges, gamification stuff, you're not really interested in having a really good graphic card because it's not the point for you to sit there and wait for hours of hours or days or weeks to crack a password. That is just in too much time. The machines are, uh, when you spin the machine up and track, for example, it's a two hour machine. So everything should be able to be, be cracked or, or, or guessed within that time, even if you're really slow. So this machine would be really good for hacking. I, I just want to say that straight out. So you can go ahead and say like, this, this, this is a benchmark. So if you should downgrade, let's just try that. I'm going to go ahead and find your laptop here. It's a $350 laptop. It's um, it's a something, let's see, uh, full HD is fine. You know, 12 gigs of RAM, still okay. You know, 265, 256 gigabyte SSD disk, that is fine. Intel Celeron, so that is a not the fastest of CPUs. Now, what we need to do now is to ba basically verify is the processor good enough. So the RAM and the hard disk will be sufficient. The screen, the size of it is totally up to you. You can even, you know, you know, take just a a a cable and then plug it into a 
external monitor if you feel like that is needed for you. So let's go ahead and see if we can find some information about the CPU here somewhere. Mm. There we go. This is the one. Is it not Jumba? Yeah, Jumba. So we have it here. 349, Celeron 2.4 gigs. Mm. Yeah. What I kind of need to know is how many cores there are. Mm. Not really sure. This is the information you kind of need to know. It would seem that it's probably two cores, if I should say something. Um, and that is that is the thing that's gonna, you know, yeah, process account two cores. So I would say this machine is it's kind of half the price, it's forty percent, forty five percent less. Um, is it worth the buy? Now, if you're on a budget, this could be done, but when you run virtual software, I would advise you to have more than one call for the virtual machine. At least two calls would be nice. Else the machine is fine if you don't need to run anything. Now, I just want to say it straight away. If you install Linux, Kali, Kali, whatever they call it, or Ubuntu or something like that, as a dual boot solution on your disk, you're right, this is okay still. This is still okay. Even though that the, the the graphic dual processor is HD graphics, that's a really crappy graphic card, but it's gonna be okay for you. So just saying that this will be okay if you install uh, Linux Kali on um, as a dual boot solution, then then that this would be okay then. But that that would be the requirement. Now if we're gonna go up to the top level, you know, you can probably go ahead and find something a bit no, actually the top level from, from this deal here is the three ninety five uh, and they actually have less RAM. That is quite interesting. But it is a Core i5, i3 I it is. And we're gonna look at this, the Core i3. You see stuff like, okay, so a 15 inch, fine, 11th generation core. So you now have a name on the actual Intel processor, which is a really good thing to be aware of. It's a key point. 8 gigs of RAM is a bit, yeah, you know, it's a bit okay. The this is really good uh, SD hard disk, you know. You have so we're gonna have go ahead and look for the amount of cores in the in the processor. I3 is usually two cores, so let's see. Uh, process account two. So all of them. You need to go like this process, this PC here, and it actually got four cores, as you can see here. And that's a Ryzen, so that's it's an AMD. Now, when you talk about different kind of architectures uh, you kind of choose from, you know, you, you got your hardcore uh, audience for Intel, you got a hardcore audience for AMD. I have no real, you know, um, advice for that you know I, I I'm, I'm an Intel kind of guy because I just use that for always I understand it you know I know what I get I know what the families are like so I just stick to that so that is really what I want to say about you know laptop so so pay pay attention to the to the uh, let me just go in the top look at this way is it is it the screen acceptable in size for you if the screen doesn't matter you know you can always just plug it to an external screen you can even plug in an external keyboard and mouse and so on I would definitely do that 11th generation of iCore, uh, you know, I would definitely go for i5 if I should say something, at least four CPUs if, if you can do that. And I would go for at least like, um, try and hit the 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now, if you, uh, oh, by the way, about the hard disk, you know, 256 gigabyte would be the minimum. Okay, so if you want to be on the safe side with, with the processors, you know, if you're going to take it up one more step, you want to get that premium computer. So some people ask me about what about Apple computers? <clears throat> All right, so let's just talk about it. They're fine, you know. I, I my work PC is an Apple computer with um, what is it, twelve cores and sixteen gigabytes RAM and stuff like that. So it's a really good computer. The problem with the Mac computers is that they the screen is really nice, you know. The 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 the, the texture of the of the metal is really nice, you know. The trackball is phenomenal. It's really the best one. 
So, but there are some things with the keyboard that's a bit of annoyance when you kind of do like the pipes and it's a different way to do it. But if you get used to it, you know, eh, who cares? Um, the graphic cards in Mac computers in general are not that great. So if you want to get a, win a Windows machine with a good graphic card, that is easier and cheaper for you uh, compared to getting a Mac computer with good graphic cards. But the Mac computers are in general spec with high-end Intel stuff, really good hardware and really good robust computers, so I would recommend that anyways. Okay, so let's go back to the idea of talking about a laptop. So when you talk about laptop, let's give, if maybe you can just write laptop in, in here. Um, no, oh, sorry, desktop, desktop, not uh, desk, desk, desktop. So when you look at the desktop computers, you can just basically take anything here. You take the first one, you know, it's just the Amazon's choice. You basically get this uh, 12th generation i5 core. Already now, the price is lower than the, the best laptops that we find. And you get the newest generation of processors. It's a six core, 12th generation. You get 12 gigs by RAM. It's easy to upgrade a laptop. Sorry, a desktop. Upgrading a laptop is a pain in the behind, right? <laughs> And you even get, you know, a really good amount of, it's an M.2, it's a really fast hard disk. I recommend this even more. And so let's go to look, take a look at the, the specs down here just a bit. Wherever they are, there. So this kind of laptop would be a desktop, so it would be really fine. And you can even see the processor count is six. So you just take it a step up already. So finding a really good, you know, desktop for cheap money is easier than finding a laptop for cheap money. So laptop would always be uh, more expensive uh, compared to the desktop because of the smaller compound devices. Also the, the, the components would be smaller and you know, the heat and the technology to you know, make sure that it don't overheat is just more expensive to, to create compared to the uh, desktop. So just picking something like that, you know, if you're going to spend your money on a desktop and it's not that important to, you know, bring it along where you are, always, you know, think about buying a desktop and you can get away with this with a really cheap amount of money. I'm pretty sure you can probably even get it cheaper if you go to your local, you know, hardware store, wherever you're from, um, and, and maybe try and look for you know, it doesn't really matter if it's 12th generation or 11th generation. The 12th generation of Intel processors introduced, you know, something called performance cores and efficient cores, which can be really good for optimizing the amount of power you use uh, for the, the tasks inside the CPUs. If you just go for the normal, you know, and, and, and the one we've been used to have, the 11th generation of Intel processors, you know, just go for the, the somewhat i i core, i7, you know, or go for i5. And the thing is, and this is many, many doesn't really know that, but if you, if you take a laptop and you go like i3, it is two cores. You go i5, it is either two cores or four cores. If you go i7, it is usually four cores, sometimes a little more. If you buy really, uh, uh, if you buy, pay a lot of money for the laptop, you can get like premium amount of, of, of hardware, and then it's gonna be maybe six or eight cores. But then we are actually out in the real, real, uh, probably like the $2,000 mark, that's not gonna be worth it. So. If you have $2,000, think about investing in a desktop because that is the way to go. So it's also gonna be the best for running a virtualization software because it's just easy to upgrade RAM-wise and CPU-wise and controlling the airflow. So I really hope you learned something from the video when you're gonna choose your computer for hacking and that is the way that I would do it. And um, amazon.com, anything you have, uh, hope I inspired you to something. See you again out there.